Thank you. Um, we appreciate all of you coming back after lunch. You must be diehard M2M enthusiasts, or you have got nothing else to do this afternoon. One of the two. <laughs> Whatever, now you are here, and I really um, thank the organizers of this M2M conference for devoting a full session, a panel discussion on standardization. Standardization, as we know, is the most unsung activities, but vitally important for the success of um, telecommunications endeavor. Standards are good when you don't even see them. If you start seeing and experiencing standards, that means something is going wrong. When things happen and you just ignore it, that means not only there are standards, but people are following those standards. So with this background um, understanding, I'm sure you'll be agreeing with me on that understanding. Welcome to a good 45 minutes to an hour discussion on where we are, what are we doing, so far as standardization is concerned for the domain called M2M. Some people call it IoT, Internet of Things. Some people call it IOE, Internet of Everything. Many companies have come up with various numbers. Uh, there'll be 50 billion connections in the not too distant future by 2020. Some say, oh, that's too little. Maybe there'll be a trillion. That's besides the point. There'll be huge big number of communicating devices. Machines are not our younger days machine. Machines are everywhere from our cell phones to little RFID devices to you name it. And the famous example of your fridge is talking to your clothes washer, it's not far away. These kinds of dialogues are starting to happen more and more, whether we realize it or not. The prices of a head of lettuce or gobi, our good old cauliflower, it may be 50 rupees today when it's nice and fresh. It might be in a couple of days 35 rupees, and after that, it may be 20 rupees based on how fresh it is. These are all machine-to-machine -machine communication. Something is watching over what's happening and communicating its worth, its value, where you are, all kinds of information. Now, why do we need standards for M2M? We know that for voice communication, Standards are needed because your cell phones that you use in Delhi, you can use it in Kolkata, you can use it in London, you can use everywhere. So standardized solutions are obviously important for voice communications, either voice or more and more, we are going, going into the data-based communication. You check your emails as soon as you get off the plane. Standards are needed there. Now, why do we need standards for 
individual verticals of this M to M world. There are plenty of verticals. Autos, agriculture, medicine, utility, all kinds of verticals. You take utility, you have electricity as a vertical, you have water supply as a vertical, so go to as many layers of granularity as you want to. As we see that individual vertical industries, they are already, not today, for quite some time, they are deploying their machine-to-machine -machine solutions. And those are working. Again, I come back to the original question that I posed, why do you need standards suddenly? Standards are needed not because of the installed base. The installed base is what we already have. We had yesterday, we have today, and maybe have tomorrow. But we need it for, how many of you were here during the morning sessions? I was here, many of you were here. We heard about smart cities, okay? Somebody said, no, 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 smart cities are too few. Our population, huge big number, three quarters, maybe more, live in villages, so we should be having smart villages. Stop for a moment, take a time out. You would think it's easy to construct a smart city. A smart city becomes a smart city when a whole host of different verticals are smart. You have smart transportation, you have got smart education, smart governance, smart utility, and if you take another step to think a little through, you will see that your e-governance cannot be a full e-governance until you have a real good smart education system. Your smart education system doesn't always work. We have heard this morning, unless we can distribute our lectures from the good professors, teachers, from far off places to the remote villages where probably that professor finds it difficult to visit once a week or once in three days or anything like that. So, as we think through, we would see that the individual verticals need to talk among themselves, exchange information to work together. So a vertical can probably satisfy the needs of un- or non-standardized solutions, but more and more we go towards a connected world, you have to have solutions that tell you how to connect the individual verticals. Again, why standards, why standards are already here, why standards are going to be done going forward, Let's give some examples. We have heard about this global organization, ITU, right? International Telecommunication Union. They're working on machine-to-machine -machine Internet of Things standards. A very prominent global standardization organization, ETSI, based out of Europe. We have got an expert from ETSI sitting right here. We'll be speaking a little later. They are doing M2M standards. They had their so-called release one out some time back. Just yesterday I saw that they are release two. This comes as releases, wave after wave of standards with more features and everything included into the standards. Those are working. An American standards organization, ATIS, A-T-I-S, that is working on M2M standards. Their whole host of standards organizations are working on M to M, IOT, IOE type standards. 
Okay, what are the chances that all of them are inventing the same shaped wheel? You can almost guarantee it. They all look somewhat circular, otherwise it does not go forward properly. But the width, the diameter, all those things, the gauge, the narrow gauge train and the broad gauge train, both are trains, but they might have different gauge sizes, parallel, fast forward to the M2M world. They might be all going the very same similar ways, but they may not be talking to one another in the perfect sense. All the ones and zeros of M2M type communications might not be happening if there is not a harmonization activity among the various activities. So standards is not all done. It will never be done. It's an ongoing process. As I said, probably it's a necessary nuisance, but you cannot get away from it. You have to take it to a level where a subjiwala can pick up a phone and talk to his or her daughter back home, how are you feeling today, my dear? Maybe the son or the daughter was not so well in the morning. In a very similar way, when a smart meter for electricity being manufactured by some company, for our example, let it be an Indian company, if we want to sell our products, not only in our country, but to sell in Singapore. And why stop within Asia? We want to sell it in Europe. We want to sell it in America. We need standardized products. You, can you make non-standardized products? Sure. Sure as hell you can do that. But the prices get jacked up because you have to have separate production lines, different design criteria and all this. All of those keep on coming down, not like this, but at least with a downward slope, if you have standards that dictate that you can, if you did it right, do it once and take it everywhere. The beauty of standards, instead of having six million voice and email customers in the world today, if we are talking about 50 billion M2M connections, if we talk about a trillion M2M connections, huge big number. I cannot even imagine what 50 billion or a trillion is besides the point. The point is these are orders of magnitude higher than what we know. And the requirements are very different. We say that, you know, machine to machine is machine to machine. No, sir. When your meter reads, it may be just a burst of data, very slow speed, comes once 15 days, once a month, great. But when your doctor is waiting for your MRI result in real time, that's a huge big pipe that sends the thing from the MRI machine to your doctor's desktop device. You cannot even compare the difference between one and the other. So the requirements are different, the geography are different, and our last but not least, we are after all human beings, our characteristics, our likes and dislikes, the way we do things, the way we enjoy our lunch, and the way a Brit or an American, they are satisfied with their useless sandwiches are very different. So what I'm saying is we have a chapati with tinchar sabji and gajar ka halwa and, and they just chew on a dry sandwich. We are both human beings, very same, similar. Both have got a couple of limbs and this and that. But 
the way you use things in our everyday life are different. So there are differences. We need to be cognizant of that and design our systems so that the individual systems, individual modules can be utilized and used over and over again. As, as many times you can use, your cost curve keeps on coming down. Can the industry do it by itself? No. You need to have the proper policies of the governments of the world. Can one government do it? Yes, they can deal with their own country. But they talk to each other in the global scale. So it's a huge big thing that is just almost at the starting gate. We need to go forward. I cannot pass an opportunity pass by. I cannot let an opportunity pass by. But reminding you that thanks to our good friends at the government of India with their help and blessing with the joint work on a private public partnership we have just a couple of months back really established a standards organization in India India's TSDO India's telecommunication standards organization the name is mouthful listen very Slowly, I'll tell you. Telecommunications Standards Development Society India. T-S-D-S-I. You'll get used to it, don't worry. There, it will be a level playing field. All of us will be working there. Government will give us guidance. The academia, the industry, the systems integrators, everybody are pledging to be working there and to tell you with a lot of hope in my heart that work has already started. M2M standards activity is going on in full swing. TTSL, Tata Teleservices and Vodafone, two major operators they are driving the M2M activities within this organization. And I'm sure that the Indian companies, the foreign companies, they're all going to be jumping in with their use cases, with their what they want to get out of it. We are at the starting gate of something very exciting. Let's pull it together. Because if we fight among each other, you know, the pie is really too big. We don't have to see, we don't have to worry about who is doing how much. We can all be fully engaged and still there'll be some things that will be undone because we don't have enough time or enough manpower, woman power to take care of those. We are doing very well. India is being looked at. I can tell you with a lot of confidence that I have been already contacted by standards organizations from around the world that they want to work with us. We are going to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Global Certification Forum, GCF, that certifies your and my cell phone around the world. They want to work in India. They want to sign an agreement with us next week and mobile wireless congress things are happening if you want to get engaged if you want to make progress come and see me talk to each other i again thank all of you being here and more so agarwalji and everybody else for your support with which the indian m2m standardization is in good shape there are activities happen, happening under the auspices of the government. So we are, we are doing well, but we have to do better. So with that, I, you know, maybe it's a little long for the informal starting, setting the stage type of discussion, but I thought I had to give a little bit of historical background of where we are so that we can put everything into perspective. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Uh, it was nice uh, listening to Dr. Chatterjee. And this is really a good thing happening in India. Uh, when we talk about M2M and M2M things in India, I will also start talking with uh, a little bit history. Everybody of us are using credit cards, swipe machines, and all those things. They are the best example of uh, M2M use case. And that is the realistic and uh, more stable and standardized things. And we are using it so we are comfortable. But when we see about the history, the efforts which have gone in making all banks, all credit card swipe machines, everything talking to each other, that has been challenges. And regulators and uh, different international agencies have taken a lot of efforts and bring that, that to a standard where we can use any credit card in any machine, in any ATM, and we can get services. And second example I would like to take about the automobile industry. We are listening so many use cases from the morning. But when we talk about M2M proliferation of how it happened, it also goes years back, 10 years, 15 years back, the concept of computerized vehicle testing. And from there it started that there should be sensor internal to the automobiles which uh, checks the parameters and that should be available at a single place, at a single port from where those can be taken. And with years of standardizations and efforts, it has gone and the concept of OBD port has come. And once that was available, it was easier that if we can get at single place, why cannot we send it remotely? So connecting it to the, uh, making it smarter by connecting to outside world was a bit simple thing and that's how the vehicles have become smarter and uh, so many use cases are there. But that was up to a uh, industry specific, vertical specific use cases. At communication level, still there are challenges coming. Application level, uh, challenges are coming. So second level of uh, standardization is required, which is on the network side. And that is what is currently being talked about uh, in all standard organizations and everywhere. Next few examples we can take is uh, the uh, services, utilities, and all, which are typically done by the, led by the government agencies. So we are listening about smart cities, smart grid, and all those kind of uh, things from the morning. And these all efforts are basically taken by in few countries led by the government. And there also the concept has been conceptualized. Some POC pilots have been done. And then it was found that where all standardizations are required. So first they have gone to internal uh, functioning of the utilities and everywhere, find out what is required. And then they are talking about the standard telecom and networking and connectivity standards. So with these things coming, and this is what we are talking from every time, that we should have industry vertical specific study groups. So this concept is coming from that, that once we know that in each industry, what are the requirements, then we have how it has to be taken to a common network, and then we can come to the network side standardization. So with these kind of concepts in mind, I will not take much time, and I would like uh, other speakers also to talk about the things. So coming from Mr. Chatterjee talking about global things, from my side giving a broad thing, I will uh, request Mr. Sharma to present his views. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ma'am Reena. And I think uh, broadly, Dr. Ashok has covered what I would have also shared. So excuse me if I repeat some information which has been already communicated by, by our expert and respected uh, person, Dr. Ashok Chatterjee. So before I talk about India, in India we are doing a lot. But before I, I, I share perspective from an Indian uh, context, uh, let me give you a briefly what we are doing in Europe or what we have done it. So if we talk about Etsy, which has been highlighted by Dr. Ashok that the release one was released way back in 2012. And if you go back further, uh, ITSI established its technical committee on machine to machine way back in 2008. And that was following up a mandate 
uh, from European Commission because European Commission way back in 2008 mandated, uh, which is a request towards the European Standards Organization to work on smart metering and smart grid. And from that time, this technical committee in machine to machine existed and they had a uh, word in all aspect when you talk about machine to machine, be it a requirement, be it the architecture, the security aspect of it, the management, the semantics, and then from there they have moved on to take care of the different verticals. Uh, when I say different verticals, which is very important and which varies from country to country because in every country we might have a different requirement considering the different geography and different requirements of our, our consumers. So they, they focused on all the aspects, the smart grid, smart meter, they have also renamed recently its, its technical committee, now they are calling it as a smart M2M because everything is becoming smart. We are integrating smart uh, cities into it and then we are talking about connected automotives. So as Dr. Uh, Ashok highlighted, it is not the end. If you have released one particular release of standards, that's not the end. The job is not done. Maybe job is just the beginning because as we all agree, the technology is changing so fast which means you have to not only maintain those standards, you have to revisit and revise those standards. As I said, I think we all agree, standards also follow a life cycle. Like the way we have a product life cycle, the standards also follow a life cycle. And that life cycle starts from a new requirement and it goes on from approval, consensus building, implementation, and then revisit and maintenance. So uh, this was done for the European market. Now, we all have discussed since morning that we could have a different requirement, we could have a local customization of it, realizing that, and on top of it, the most important is the return on investment. The, when you say return on investment, you also talk about economies of scale. Now, when you talk about machine to machine, introducing machine to machine solution today, incur a huge capex. Now, with this capex, we know the revenue model is not there, the business model is not there. Now that will only come when you have economies of scale. How would this economies of scale will come? This will only come when a solution which is built in India is applicable for the world, which means it has an interoperability piece of it. Now when this interoperability piece of it is talked about, the another important is now it's a global economy. Now everything is moving from one country to another country. One product sold in any part of the world is, is applicable to any part of the world. So with that in mind, the regional SDOs from Asia, from North America, from Europe, all of the known regional SDOs, they came together. They agreed that, okay, fine, let's create something similar to 3GPP, the third generation partnership project. So they established, it's called 1M2M partnership project. And they agreed that let's, let's decide the core framework that what is our target, let's build a solution Let's build a standards which is applicable for the world, which means that will bring the economies of scale, that will create an architecture which is, which is ready for mature mass rollout. So with that in mind, this, this partnership was established in way back in July 2012, and a lot of technical reports and technical standards have already been published uh, concerning the management, the requirement, even for architecture, which would be most important because when you talk about machine to machine, it could be a different type of application. Some could come with a SIM card, some could come with only IP, some could be invaded. But at the end of it, somewhere they have to talk before they really go back and talk to the, the, the existing cellular technologies, whether it is 2G, 3G, LTE, somewhere they have to talk. So that's where we talk about the service layer. Now this service layer is the most important piece when you talk about introduction of these machine to machine type of applications. So that is where they, they are targeting it as an important element of the, the machine to machine and they are going to release this machine to machine architecture, release one from 1M2M sometime in April, May this year. And all the aspects from 1M2M will be ready by August 2014. So all the standards, be it architecture, requirement, security, management, semantics, everything will be ready, which will be ready for implementation on the wall. So that's where they stand as far as 1M2M is concerned. Now if I come back and talk about India, it, I must appreciate the initiative taken up by the Department of Telecom by floating those list of questionnaires covering all policy aspects, 
security, know your customer norms, all the all these aspects were consolidated and industry has really actively participated. ITSI also responded to these questions. Uh, one last but important fact I would like to highlight is a lot of work is happening in India now. Like for example, CDOT is quite active in, in research and development, including the product development in machine to machine. TEC has recently established the term of reference and created a working group which are relevant from an Indian perspective, covering surveillance, health, power, uh, all these, uh, and, and including e-health. So they are working from that perspective. CDOT is working from a uh, product development perspective. Uh, now under the close guidance of DOT, with industry, through academicians, and the manufacturers, vendors, they all came together and established, as Dr. Chatterjee announced, the TSDSI, Telecom Standard Development Society, India, uh, which is a very, very important step, and we must all work together because at the end of it, as I said, no trade barriers, interoperability in place, that will only happen when uh, a regional standard organization work with the global organizations. Uh, I perfectly agree that we could have our local requirements, but it is important that these local requirements are persuaded well with global platform like 1M, 2M, and 3GPP. I mean, there are situations when sometimes some proposal comes from some countries which is not applicable for the world, but it is important for that country, and that will be recorded in their standard development exercise as an annex, which means this is only applicable for India. So it is very important that, that we all work under one umbrella because the architecture or, which, or the association which this 1M2M1 M1 is looking forward is the regional SDO only, because they will only allow a uh, regional SDO to be a member of it. Then they contribute during the draft stage and then they contribute the local requirements. So it is very important that all these fragmented efforts harmonize under one umbrella, and the most favorable umbrella right now is the TSDSI, through which the local requirement could be communicated to the global platform. It's, it's the most important, and I think we are rightly, at the right time, ready for this, uh, this engagement, and we must start with that engagement. Uh, with that, I, I close it uh, uh, and give it back to our chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dinesh. It was good to listen all these kind of things. Uh, now I, uh, I will switch to uh, Rajneesh <laughs> to give their perspective on the standard side, what is happening and what are the future plans. Sure. Um, so so I, I come from, uh, you know, telecom operator, right? So uh, I'll, I'll give the perspective of, you know, how uh, M2M devices and the M2M applications, you know, talk to the network. And where is the need of standards, you know, uh, coming from? So, uh, Dr. Ashok and Dinesh, I mean, uh, you know, we have heard about uh, why the standards are required. Uh, I'll reinforce those ideas with some of the examples, some of the tidbits, you know, that we have seen day-to-day uh, -day from our customers, you know, what they're asking for, what are the problems they are facing uh, when their M2M devices are talking to the network, uh, <laughs> when their applications are talking to the network. So let me start off with the piece where the devices with the SIMs uh, or any other radio technology, I mean, it can be RF mesh or whatever it is, but uh, whatever telecom resources they are trying to use, how they interact with the network and uh, where is the need of the standards, you know, springing from. So let me take an example where, uh, you know, uh, you put a SIM in a device and it doesn't work, right? Uh, but you put that SIM in a handset, it works, right? So, so it tells us something, uh, you know, and what is it? It's basically, you know, the handsets have evolved over years. And that today, you know, you can go to a, a mobile store and pick up a handset, put a SIM, it works. Uh, this same thing is something that we should, you know, kind of have the vision of achieving when we are, you know, uh, devising the standards. Um, some of the issues that we are facing today is, you know, the voltages, for example, don't match, you know, between a device and a SIM, right? Uh, with a handset and a SIM, these issues won't be there. You know, handset manufacturers typically are uh, very advanced in their research. You know, they have evolved over years. And what it has led to is, uh, you know, uh, you know, interoperability of the highest standard, right? Uh, we will definitely go there. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, but till that time, uh, you know, these are some of the things that we should keep in mind uh, when we are, you know, putting together standards uh, so that uh, uh, we, we can leverage more and more device vendors, you know, from India, uh, which we can manage, you know, which we can, uh, you know, uh, make sure that they work with our uh, networks. Some of the other things, uh, you know, a couple of other examples, uh, when we tend to put, you know, some SIMs which don't work in a device, right, what happens, these devices tend to keep on latching to the network. What that leads to is, you know, the network KPIs tend to go down, 
this doesn't happen with handsets, right? If your SIM doesn't work, the handset, after a while, it stops you know, trying to latch onto the network. Uh, so these devices again uh, are you know a little bit of maturity is is something which is uh, coming up and some more work needs to be done on this side. If I tend to go towards the the core network you know of our telecom network piece you know from the radio network, uh, we would see that there are requirements on the security aspects you know as uh, we are anyways working as part of our uh, you know M to M policy right. Uh, the for example I mean and a particular a private APN that I'm trying to use in a device. If that private APN doesn't work, I shouldn't allow uh, you know, the device to communicate on a public network or a public APN, right? A triple W APN, for example. So, uh, so for example, at Vodafone, you know, we are uh, you know, much more uh, you know, paranoid about security. We don't let that happen. And uh, I, I would assume that you know, when we devise standards from a uh, device to application, uh, you know, from peer to peer point of view, we make sure that we uh, you know, incur special security considerations that uh, no other data communication, no default data communication should be allowed, right? Um, <clears throat> another thing is if we now go towards the M2M application side, how those applications tend to talk to our network. If you see, I mean, when we started off with the mobile telephony, the only killer app was SMS, right? It changed the way we communicated, you know, besides the voice piece of it. Uh, today, the killer app is apps, right? And what has made those apps, uh, you know, kind of a ubiquitous phenomenon is that uh, there are not 20, 30, 40, or 100 vendors, you know, who are developing those apps. There are you know, thousands and thousands of hundreds of thousands of developers who are developing these apps and putting out to Play Stores, right? So what has made this phenomenon uh, you know, really possible today? It's because the networks uh, you know, or, or the IT ecosystems of operators or, or the SI partners, right? They have exposed these things as APIs to these developers. They can quickly uh, you know, create those apps, leverage my network, you know, for example, get the location. Uh, I, can, I can bill, for example, uh, you know, using my billing APIs. They can send SMSs via my network using those APIs. All they had to know is, you know, I can develop an application, uh, you know, which works on uh, on on internet, right? So similar inf infrastructure or similar ecosystem of exposing the network or the uh, or, for example, the sensors, right? There are some standard bodies which are uh, making sure that the sensor data is available uh, to a standard HTTP developer, right? So when these things are available as APIs, you know, from the network, from the sensors, from other, uh, uh, you know, M2M -M ecosystem components, uh, then the application development will start becoming very easy. Uh, very standardized and which can be uh, you know and it and it creates the the field open uh, for for all the developers so today uh, what we see is i mean kind of niche development you know there are particular vendors who are very strong in 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 uh, say healthcare some of the others are in you know connected car and those sort of things what we however need to do is uh, how do we make sure those applications are actually leveraging my network also, they are able to talk to other applications also, right? So we need some sort of standardized uh, Amtum service layer, which, uh, uh, you know, at Etsy, uh, Dinesh mentioned, you know, which is being worked upon and we'll soon see standards. Uh, so we are also making sure that when we are talking to vendors, when we are discussing our designs for Amtum applications, we are kind of, uh, if, not, if not we are, uh, you know, ready now, but at least from a future point of view, we make sure that, you know, those applications would be interoperable. Uh, I'll conclude this with a thought uh, that, uh, M2M would actually generate huge amount of data, right? Uh, it is not just about machines talking to an application and delivering a particular use case. It is about what we do with that data, right? Ultimately, we want those uh, meters to be smart because we want our electricity consumption to be controlled, uh, because we want the efficiencies to kick into the system. To do that bit, we need to analyze this data. So again, I should be able to actually take all of this data, which should be standardized, which should be formatted, you know, available to, uh, for example, an analytics application in the cloud. I should be able to take this M2M data, put into a Google Analytics app in the cloud, and get some analytics how I can actually reduce my electricity consumption, right? Uh, I, I stay in a society uh, in Mumbai where the electricity bill monthly is around 10 lakhs, right? So how do we, how do we you know, really cut that down? You know? So that analytics has to be made available, which can only be done if I know the data is coming to me in a standard format. So some of the work is being done as part of M2M service layer, uh, and I'm pretty sure that in the terms of analytics and cloud applications, uh, you know, that work will continue, and we will see a homogenized ecosystem of you know, M2M cloud and uh, uh, devices together with the network. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Now, yeah, now I switch to Mr. Sani to give us the idea about uh, Sukrut system as well as uh, M2M Asia, what is happening on the standard side on both the places. Well, as uh, I told earlier that we are into the solution uh, offering and all. Uh, so, th I actually, from the industry perspective, I probably have a question to uh, my fellow panelists. And some of the questions uh, follow from uh, 
the standardization of the products. Like, you know, you have a certification process. We have a standardization process, of course. But how do we decide? Today in India, there's no body which can actually do the certification that this device is actually adhering to the standards, right? So we don't have that body as of, as of today in India. Right. And uh, that's one of the gap that I, that I see. Uh, other thing is, uh, so far I have not seen uh, many operators or telcos in India which are going forward looking at the integration of OSS and BSS services with the M2M service providers. If I need to do my service enablement on say my say 100,000 devices or say 1,000 devices and suppose uh, it may be because of the service failure, it may be because of anything or maybe billing process or anything. I don't really have a way to do the service enablement. That's one thing. I, I go forward is like uh, some of the cases that we have seen with our customers is that uh, sometimes some of the data cards or some of the cards there's like access billing. And access billing sometimes it may be misuse of a card, of course. Uh, at some time it may be just a jumping or, or I don't know over uh, the metering part of, of it. Uh, but many a times I have seen that uh, I talked to the telcos and told them why can't we put an upper limit if my card is supposed to spend 50 bucks or 100 bucks a month and my data communication is not going to be more than 10 MB or maybe 20 MB maximum. Why can't I put a limit of 100 bucks a month? That if it goes, it's going beyond 100 bucks a month, you at least report back to the application service provider that it's actually overshooting the budget or there's something wrong with the device. Those are the things which are still not available to the service providers. So let me, uh, let me address it right away. <coughs> So uh, at Vodafone, we already have uh, an Amtem service platform, which is, so you had my course. Uh, that's, that's exactly the use case of an Amtem service platform. So there are two aspects to your question. One is, uh, how do I make sure, uh, you know, from a network side, you know, uh, you control the data usage, you monitor the data usage. Second thing is, how do you have a, vi a visibility of the IT system, right, the OSS and BSS? So Amtem service platform does exactly the same thing, right? I give you a portal. Uh, now this platform is, you know, talking to my packet core network, and this platform is talking to my OSS BSS systems. And this platform is actually exposing, you know, on a portal all of this data, uh, you know, to 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 you or to you know your further customer in a B two B or B two B two C model. So for example, you can monitor the data sessions, how much data is being consumed. You can actually put the rules there, then and there on that portal, which actually goes and apply to my network, you know, in real time that if the data consumption goes beyond uh, you know, X uh, percentage of the total data usage that you want, say of 10 MB, uh, it will uh, you know, suspend your SIM. So that is something which is available uh, you know, from us I mean, right now. You know, that is there. Similarly, from the IT systems controlling point of view, you can change your tariff plan, you can change your services that you want to apply on your, uh, on your SIM cards, m to SIM cards. That you can do online on the portal and it gets reflected in my IT systems. So this is something that, uh, that you know, we have already done. And uh, uh, and it's you know kind of uh, you know couple of our customers are in fact using it as well. Okay. okay. Uh, now I have few questions. Uh, one is for uh, Dr. Chatterjee and uh, for uh, second is to both of you, Dr. Chatterjee and Sharma. Uh, when we have uh, first question is that uh, TSDSI is formed. So when what is the timeline or time frame where we can expect some standards uh, coming out? And second question, what I was talking that it will go to both of you that uh, to an Indian startup or an entrepreneur who want to do something on M2M and they want to give requirements, uh, reaching to an individual is something which is very, very challenging. So what is the mechanism you are trying to address to them that where they, they can come and uh, contact and give the requirements. If we talk about ITU and all, they talk about membership and huge payments and only then somebody can give requirements. So how you, we want to address India from those perspectives? Thank you. Um, these are exactly the things that are happening as we speak. The first meeting of the governing council of TSDSI is going to take place on the 22nd of this month. They are going to officially bless the formation of the working groups. One of the working groups is on M2M. There will be a several, your colleagues from the government will be there, starting with Mr. A.K. Mittal, 
So what I want to emphasize is if from the country perspective, if we have some needed timeline, we need to bring it in to TSDSI. From the industry perspective, from the business case, if we need some requirements, then it needs to come in to the working group. I have no magic wand that says that anybody can come and join. It's virtually anybody can come and join. With the blessing of the government, we had put in some attendance membership fees. As far as I know, as of yesterday, the trend has been to slash those required fees by 75%. The whole idea, Rinaji, is to make exactly what you're talking about so that it becomes very inclusive. If you have a very high fee to join and only a very few people can do it, it's much better to have a much lower entrance barrier and a lot more people can come and join. So we are expecting a whole host of people, starting from apps makers to the network providers to the OEMs that make up the network equipments. They'll be coming and doing it. What is the timeline? You know, timeline is not set by the standards body. Timeline is, not, is set by the membership. Standards organization is just a platform that allows a level playing field that nobody is aggrieved that I didn't get an ample opportunity to get my thing heard. The best player, whosoever that might be, may win and we are making a specific effort to make an interface between the industry and the government so that there is a right away a dialogue that talks about not only the industry's wish list but with the national requirements at the same place. So everything is being addressed. Wait for another seven to ten days and think so we are going to first of all appoint probably a couple of leaders, technical leaders in those groups and within a month's time you are going to hold formal elections. It is, I can guarantee you, that nothing is going to be non-transparent. It will be absolutely out in the open. It's all in the hands of whosoever wants to make use of it. Thank you for the question. Okay, thank you. And now, Dinesh Ji, from your side, that ETSI, if somebody wants to address two ETSI and one M2M forum, their requirements, how they can approach without actually becoming member of uh, those forums or maybe how those can happen from India point of view. Yeah, before I answer that question, let me go back to the original uh, input which Dr. Ashok has clarified. ITSI signed an LOI with TSDSI along with other uh, SDOs from uh, CCSA, Arab and TTA, TTA. So that joint LOI is already in place. That cooperation is already in place. We are committed to work together on mutual topics of interest. So that commitment is already there, that exchange of information will happen. And uh, I'm quite hopeful that uh, very soon uh, TSDSI will join 1M2M and 3GPP uh, once they, they complete their governing council election. So that, that connect will be completed. Without waiting for that connect, a uh, paper, a formal LOI is already in place, which means we are exchanging information, we are working together. Uh, as he highlighted, the working group on machine to machine is quite active uh, with the help of Vodafone and the Tata Motors TCS. So that work is ongoing. Now, one M2M uh, project is open. You can definitely go and, and, and join that uh, as a government organization. The only problem is uh, the, the, you will not be able to contribute your requirement during the draft stage. That is only applicable for the regional SDOs. When they become a member, then they start working together. As he highlighted, these SDOs are a platform. They just give you an opportunity to connect the industry, the manufacturers, the operators, the entire community to come and sit together, bring consensus, 
and then start working producing those papers. And once those papers are become a standard, uh, just to go back to your question regarding certifications, once standards are built, it is built with specifications. And those are the specifications which becomes a guideline for testing and certification. GCF is one example. If GCF comes on board, it's a global uh, certification agency. If one particular product is built on a global standard or, or a harmonized standard, it's tested any part of the world, it's good to go any part of the world. We have a telecommunication engineering center who has been doing a great amount of work in certifications. They are getting up. As I said, they started working on machine to machine. Hopefully, once we have those standards, they'll create a framework and then they'll take it to the certification label. And then you could go for MRA, the Mutual Recognition Agreement. If any product is tested any part of the world, it need not to be retested. But then, India has an equal label of recognizing each other's certification. If it is certified by TEC, it should be good to be applicable for around the world. So that is what, to answer your question, yes, it is open. You can definitely uh, go, go ahead uh, for this membership, but then it has certain limitations. Uh, and the limitation is that you are not allowed to participate during the draft stage. Of course, uh, 3GPP, the ITC, and the 1M2M, once the standard is completed, it is published, it is in the public domain. You can download, you can study, you can use them. But during the draft stage, that is only applicable for the members. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to open the session for the audience itself. Uh, my question is to Mr. Ashok and, of course, Mr. Sharma. Uh, Dr. Ashok, um, of course, you rightly said that this, uh, this is not a targeted uh, time frame cannot be given to the standardization body. And, of course, uh, things are very, very in advanced stage as far as TC is concerned and as far as TSDSI is concerned. But uh, the only worry for the government of India is ki because, as you pointed out, ki, uh, M2M standards are going to be finalized in July, August by the uh, ETA, ETC. And once our requirements are not put forth well in time, so we may be lacking behind. That is only worried. Otherwise, no issue. TEC is working, you are working, but the point from DOT angle is, I, I am not aware ki who is working fast, but definitely our requirement should be put forth to the uh, standardization body so that those can be taken care of in the draft stage itself. Absolutely, sir. sir. I can assure you, sir. what is being standardized is release one, release two. To give you an example, sir, say for GSM, UMTS, LTE, LTE Advanced, this continuum of standards, we are now at the level of release 12, working on release 13. GSM standards have been started to be developed 16, 17 years back. I was one of the 20 or so people around the world who created 3GPP. It didn't exist. Now, GSM standard is being developed before 3GPP was created. So it has a long history. This is the beauty. The beauty is nothing stays put in one place for a long time. People will keep on doing what they have to do. But the other, the flip side of the coin is you are never too late to join the game. Once the, the outputs that Dinesh just mentioned are just the initial things that are okay. coming out, we will be, you know, this morning session, sir. In morning session, we said, and this is one of the main things that we keep on discussing in all these events, that the Indian requirements up until now were not being fed in the right way into the global discussion. Yeah, I mean, we say that when a third generation mobile handset standard is being made, they are looking at 60, not 60 kilometers, 60 miles per hour the car is moving, and if the call is maintained between one base station to the other. Yape, in Delhi, in a rush hour, your car does not move 60 inches per hour. I'm just exaggerating a little bit. So our requirements are very different from somebody else's requirements. And you cannot expect them to work on our requirements. We have to. We have to bring in our things into the global market. And as you exactly pointed out, 
we collectively, everybody sitting here, the government, the industry, the academy, everybody, we are now poised to take our things into the global scale. We'll be members of 3GPP. We'll be members of 1M2M. And the idea that we said the exposing the service layer, the application interfaces to the application makers, that's where I think, it, this is my personal view, we will excel because our apps makers, they know, nobody knows better than them what is important for India, Indians, and our psyche. So it is about to happen. And I'll be pushing for outputs to come out of TSDSI and go, not in the final stage, because once you're in the final stage, everything's signed, sealed, and delivered. It's just as you send out something from your office under your signature, sir, it's done. But what is going to happen is from our, from the TSDSI's point of view, things will be fed into the global levels while it is being worked. Yeah. So they can do the tweaks. Give you an example in the spectrum field. If India says we are going to allow such and such spectrum for 1800 band or 900 band, this comes to my mind because we just finished the auction yesterday. Nobody in 3GPP can say that this is not in our plan. It is not to be touched by anybody. It's our sovereign rights to do whatever we want. It goes in to the 3GPP's discussion or 1M2M's discussion as is. And we cannot expect other people to be working on ours. Let me repeat myself. We will be there in full force based on the work that we are doing here and make sure that our thing gets, gets into the global standards. I think that, that answers my question very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and yeah. just to add you, till the time they do not become a member, being a representative of ITSI, this project is in, in this country, in this New Delhi, and I am filling up that gap. We are exchanging all the information. We responded to your paper. And all the work which we are taking place today on M2M is getting exchanged. And we are a mass market. So if we, they are watching us, but as Dr. Ashok said, uh, we will feed in the information in a structured way so it is well recorded. That's what uh, will be done. Until the time, this is already in place, this project. Okay. Any other question from the audience side? Yes, Dr. Narang. See, my basic concern is Indian concerns being addressed globally. In fact, in the power sector, it is not happening. Uh, BI certified products or even certified in Indian labs are not recognized glo uh, globally. Uh, KEMA certification is not, uh, you know, for electrical, this thing is not allowed in India. You know, we do not have any of that kind of harmonization. We have, you know, we accept IEC certified products in India. But uh, our certified products, so th that should not happen we, since TSDS is here now. You know, we must ensure, so power sector problem, let power sector BIS will handle. But at least uh, in the telecom side now that we have some standard SDO uh, in place, we must ensure that our uh, certification, what, what you mentioned, that TEC certified product should be accepted globally, one point. And yes, second, sir, it will be. There is no doubt about that. That's a very encouraging news. Uh, second point is, now we are talking about telecom uh, um, standards and M and all that. Now, along with this comes the cyber security, the security side. You know, we, uh, even uh, there's some, I don't remember the name, there's some common certification, this thing, and uh, this thing for, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, in that, India is still not uh, fully, you know, recognize the proper this thing. So our certification is not accepted. What is our roadmap to have a communication standard and a security standards organization and certification within India for the Indian ecosystem, which is accepted globally? Uh, just to uh, add on to your cyber security, it is common criteria recognition mm, yeah. agreement. Uh, in quite recent time, uh, the certification category has been assigned to India. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, yeah, there was some meeting in Canada. Yes. So mm. earlier we were only mm. the consuming nation. Yeah. Now, a equal certification status has been granted to India. Okay. Uh, Daiti is the owner of that, and STQC is taking care of it. Okay. Uh, that particular is in place. So okay. with that in place, the MRA is also in place. Okay. Of course, some yes. discussions are happening from a security point of view because mm. uh, some claims are there that we could have some. Uh, local requirement or some customized requirements. Some discussions are happening on that. But to share with you, as far as IT systems are concerned, because CCR is only applicable for yeah, IT graded system, know, router, switches. So that particular part is over. Mm -hmm. From a telecommunication uh, point of view, he's already said it will be in place and we are working actively, even including the security piece of it from a telecom point of view. 3GPP is working on creating a framework. Uh, GSMA has been uh, approached to create a certification network like the way we have CCRA. Uh, and then we are working with Department of Telecom quite closely that there is no need to create an entire uh, from scratch framework for certification. Let 3GPP come, back, come out with their, their framework, study it, and if you believe some additional requirements are needed, suggest it back, which will be done through uh, TSDSI. So I'm sure uh, the day is not far when we will have uh, MRA in place. And similarly, oh, to go back to your question on s energy, mm. with Bureau of Energy Efficiency, uh, Bureau of Indian Standards, mm. Ministry of Commerce, government to government discussions are happening mm. uh, to establish an MRA between Europe and India as part of the FTA. And, and then one project has already been started to take care of it because the, the Indian demanded to have a, a blanket MRA, which is not possible and feasible. So now they're focusing on sector to sectors, and I'm sure energy will be taken care of that. Okay. The, on, the point is, it will be recognized once we Gradually. have the harmonized standards. Very right. Uh, very simple is, if you, if you customize any standard in your country, it becomes difficult for a certification agencies to say, fine, we recognize each other's certifications. <laughs> so once we have harmonized standards, certifications, MRA is not so far from here. Yeah, just to give you an example mm -hmm. how a country, Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm just maybe taking a little too much time, mm -hmm. just to give an example. China tried it to have their standards in security called WAPI. I know. They tried to have TDS CDMA for the access. Everything failed miserably. They took their TDD based LTE to 3GPP. It's succeeding. They are using it. Our operators are using it. So there is no alternative but to globalize. But to globalize, you have to be player in the global arena. We did not have a mechanism to play Very solidly right. in the global arena, but never too late to start. And Very here we are. Yeah. Uh, one last question on this thing. Uh, How about the, the, uh, the, 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 the last mile connectivity? Up to the IP and the basic telecom, and the, uh, this thing is fine, IT has taken this uh, telecom instead. How about these, uh, uh, you know, low power RF standards and all those things? That's where we still have a lot of, this thing. there are so many protocols, so many standards, and in India we are still trying to find what is right for India. Sir, if you have some bright ideas, one of the working groups in TSDSI hmm. is on radio and spectrum. Bring your ideas. Sure. We will take it. We promise. We'll take it and bat for it. Okay. In the cricket yep. sense, and make a chakka. Sure. Thanks. In the global time. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. So I'm sure there will be more questions, but that we will take in the tea break. Uh, to sum up the session. Uh, we have starting from Dr. Ashoka, we have come to know that we have now India specific telecom standardization organization and that is really a good news for India because till now whatever was happening in the world we were following it and uh, we are we were adding our requirements somehow managing with Jugaad and if it succeed it was given the name of innovation that India is doing innovative things but with com these kind of standards things coming we can take their the requirements at global level recognize it and get the it uh, with the global recognitions we can our products developed can go in the global platform that can be a good thing coming to uh, what Mr. Dinesh Sharma has said, he has given focus on uh, 
that uh, any device can be used anywhere, plug and play kind of things which are happening in internet world and in M2M also this should happen and this is the requirement of the day. Next he has uh, focused on the service layer which is also requirement. Then uh, Mr. Rajdish Mittal uh, given standards perspective from the telecom viewpoint that uh, if a device is not connecting it goes in whose domain, how end-to-end -end services can be monitored, maintained and customer gets the experience of the committed end-to-end -end services. Uh, Mr. Seni has put so many questions, one of them which remains answered is the product certification. That is something where nothing has happened in India till date and that is something a field which has to be uh, taken forward and from DOT side we are trying to do if something can happen in that direction also for the M2M product certifications in India. And with this I give it to the organizers to close the things. You were a good audience and thanks for the panelists. Thank you.